6.6 phase shifts. Last thing that we'll do with trigonometric functions, um, so moving it left to right, that's basically what a phase shift is. Uh, it has a slightly different name than with normal functions, but that's the idea behind it. Uh, we're going to look at y equals the sine of x minus pi over 2. Um, I'll explain it two ways. First, we'll go through what I have over here. So uh, if you look at a regular sine, it has a period of 2 pi, right? The normal period for a sine function is 2 pi, and you would like it to start at a value of 0 and end with a value of 2 pi. Well, if that's what you want, then you can solve this argument. That's called the argument. You can solve that for, you know, solving it for 0 is less than or equal to x minus pi over 2 is less than or equal to 2 pi. By doing that, you ensure that the values you actually end up finding the sign for start at 0 and go to 2 pi. So add pi over 2 on both sides. So you end up with pi over 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to, and that's 4 pi over 2, right? So that's 5 pi over 2. Okay. That means that this is the start of your table, and then this is the end of your table when you make your table. So this is pi over 2, and this ends at 5 pi over 2. Usually this would be 0, and that would be 2 pi. Okay, the other way you can look at this, this is, for example, let's say that I have an x squared one, and it would be x minus 2 squared. Wouldn't this negative 2 mean that we have a shift right of 2 units? Okay, so if that's a shift right of 2, then this is a shift right Sorry, it's a little sloppy. A shift right pi over 2 units. Okay. Now, if you want to finish your table, the next thing then, once you have your start and your end, is you still want to look at your period. So the period depends on the number in front of the x that you're multiplying by. Well, it does have to be the number over here. So you could put a 1 there, right? And it's this 1, it's this value here on the outside of the brackets that determines. Um, what the period is. So in this case it would be 2 pi divided by 1, which is just 2 pi. And so we multiply by 1 over 4, which means we're going to count by pi over 2's. So pi over 2 plus pi over 2, so we're counting by pi over 2's, right? So we just continue adding pi over 2. So then this is pi, and this would be 3 pi over 2, then we're at 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi, and then that's 5 pi over 2. Now this is the line that we usually skip. Okay, but I did want you to see it again, and you'll see it one more time, I think, in the example. So what happens when you do x minus pi over 2? Well, that's 0. And pi minus pi over 2 is pi over 2. There's pi. 2 pi minus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. 5 pi over 2 minus pi over 2 would be 2 pi. And this is the norm. these are the normal values that we want for the sign, from 0 to 2 pi counting by pi over 2s. So that means that you get your normal pattern. The sign starts at 0, goes to 1, back down to 0, over 2, or down to negative 1, and back to 0. Well, then we can graph this, right? We're going to start with making coordinate system. Um, what you want to do on top of this is you want to um, make sure that you use this to get to the start. Okay, so that's 1 pi over 2, which happens to be the start, so it works out really well here. So that's 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. And we're going to mark that as 5 pi over 2. Um, in this case, I'm going to mark this one as pi over 2. And it starts at 0, goes to 1, down to 0, down to a negative 1. So let's call that a negative 1, back to 0. And so your sine function with a shift of pi over 2 units right looks like this. Because you're so close here, you should figure out what you get over here in this case. And especially in this case, it comes out as even because you're counting by pi over 2. So every pi over 2, you, you should be able to place a dot. So the dot here should have been right there. You can look at that pattern. So in this case, I would expect you to connect that to the x-axis. That doesn't all or to the y-axis. Sorry, that doesn't always work because this could be a shift of like 3 pi units and then you can just graph it sort of in the middle and, and, and let it be. But in this case, you know, I, I think we should, in this case you should extend to the y-axis. Okay. 
Let's do a little bit more complicated example. We'll go through the whole thing. So um, we're going to go graph a sine. It has a change in amplitude right there, right? That's a multiplication on the outside. It has a change in the period. So somewhere in here there's a multiplication on the inside. And it's definitely tied to that 4. There's a phase shift. So it's tied to this plus pi somehow. However, it's not plus pi. We'll see it in a moment. And it has a vertical shift addition or subtraction on the outside. So that's the last one. The vertical shift is over here. So the 2, that's an amplitude change, right? So there's your amplitude change. Here's your vertical shift. So the messy stuff is over in here. So what we need to do is we need to find the change in the period and the phase shift. So we need to rewrite this 4x plus pi. That's that ax plus pi that I have over here. And this could be plus anything, but in this case it's plus pi. We need to write that this way so that we can get our change in period here and our phase shift over there. All right, so 4x plus pi, we're going to factor out the 4, so then that becomes plus pi over 4, right? Because that's 1 pi. And then we're going to solve the inequality. We want it to go from 0 to 2 pi, so let's solve that. I'll divide by 4, and that's easy. So then we get, let me do that over here. So we're dividing by 4, that's still 0, and then that's just x plus pi over 4. And then this becomes 2 pi divided by 4 is pi over 2. And then we subtract pi over 4, so it's minus pi over 4, which you could have picked up over here. Less than or equal to x, less than or equal to pi over 2 is 2 pi over 4 minus 1 is 1 pi over 4. So here is the start of the table. And here is the end of the table. And this is really nice because the shift actually makes me go to the left side of the y-axis, so I have negatives and positives, so this one will go right through the y-axis, so I don't have to extend anything. So we need to find a period, okay, so the period is 2 pi divided by the number that we're multiplying by, so it's that one, so it's 4, so the period is pi over 2. When we multiply by 1 over 4 to f divide it in equal parts, you end up with pi over 8. So this is what I'm going to count by, okay? All right, make sure I got everything. I think I do. Uh, yep, I marked start and end of the table there. All right, so step two is make a table with values. So what did you say? Start at a negative pi over four. So this was a negative pi over four, and I should end at a positive pi over four. All right, let's see if that works, if I count by pi over eights. So, you know, in my mind, a negative pi over four is a negative two pi over eight, right? So I'm going to add pi over eights to this. So this is a negative one pi over eight plus pi over 8 is 0, plus pi over 8 is pi over 8, and then this is 2 pi over 8, which reduces. So that, that works. Great. Okay? All right, then here we have two lines. This line and this line we usually skip, but I did want you to see this one more time to sort of see why do we do this stuff. So if you add pi over 4 to negative pi over 4, you get 0, right? This is a negative pi over 8 plus, again, pi over 4 is 2 pi over 8, so that's pi over 8, right? So 0, that's pi over 4. And then plus this is 3 pi over 8. And then the last one should be 4 pi over 8, which is pi over 2. Then we're going to multiply by 4. So 0, 4 pi over 8, that's pi over 2. 4 pi over 4, that's pi. 4 times 3 is 12. So this ends up being 3 pi over 2. And 4 pi divided by 2 is 2 pi. And then hopefully you see why we usually skip this, but this is the sign that the, this is what we want the sign to go through, right? We want it to go from 0 to 2 pi in four equal steps. Well, that's perfect. So that means that I get to start at 0, go up to 1, back to 0, down to a negative 1, up to 0. So this is the normal sign pattern that we want, right? And then usually we would skip these two. We would skip these two rows all together. We don't usually use these at all. Um, because the whole reason that we are doing all this work up front, that means you know step one and two, is to get this ideally situated so that you know you're going to get 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and 0. So you get to skip that. And then from here on, it's just normal transformations. So you know, 2 times 0 is still 2. I mean, it's 0, sorry, I was ahead of my mind, 2 times 0 is still 0, and we get 2, we get 0, we get a negative 2 and 0, 
and then you add a negative 1 to that, so it's a negative 1, 1, negative 1, negative 3, and a negative 1, and then you can plot that, okay? So let's see, uh, this one should be in the middle, because we go both to the left and to the right, and I don't think I'll need that much, but okay. So that's a negative power of 4 is the start in two steps, and then add a positive power of 4 over here. So that's power of 4, there's a negative power of 4. And what do we need to go? We need to go to negative 1, and we need to go to 1, 2. Oh, we don't need to go that way, we need to go this way. Negative 3. Alright, so start at a negative 1. We're going to go up to 1, down to a negative 1 down to a negative 3, back to negative 1, and then here is the overall graph of the function. So in this case, I don't have to extend. Let's mark these. I don't have to extend because I'm already cutting through, and then that's it. And that's how complicated, that's um, all we will do with this. So there's not nothing else that we can really do. So, thank you. forgot to do this part. Okay, so I think it's good practice to look at some rewriting things and see so uh, we can see what really happens. We're going to copy the two. So on the inside we want to take that 4 out. Okay, so that's just simple factoring. That means that that becomes an x. And then here you end up with 3 pi over 4. So that gives me two things. Uh, I know now that the phase shift is the pi over the 3 pi over 4. So it's 3 pi over 4. Since it's a positive, that actually means it's going to be 3 pi over 4 left. I also know that the period will be 2 pi divided by 4, which is pi over 2. Right? So this function will go 3, over, 3 pi over 4 left. So the start of the table will be at a negative 3 pi over 4. And then when you add the period to that, so that's 2 pi over 4, you still be at a negative pi over 4. So this whole sine, or cosine, is going to be graphed to the left of the y-axis. So I'll probably extend over here. Um, on this one, that 1 is just a vertical shift, right? So that 3 needs to come out. So that gives me a 3 here, and then I end up with a negative pi over 3 over here. Okay, so the phase shift for this one. So we have a phase shift of pi over 3. Since it's a negative, it's going to go to the right. Okay, and then from there, so that's the starting point, right? So if it starts there, then in your table, and we'll make a table for us. And if you start at power of 3, and we're going to call this way, again, you're going to miss the y-axis, right? So we probably extend over there. And then we get a period here of 2 pi divided by 3. So it's sort of an awkward period. All right, let's look at the last one. So the 2 is just an amplitude change. And on this one, I'm going to take out a negative 2, so that leaves me with an x, and then that's a negative pi over 2. Okay, so here's the second reason I'm doing this, and so let me make sure that we understand that this is the whole argument. So this negative is, is a little in the way. It's a little awkward to work with negatives on the inside, and this is one of the great spots to use the fact that the cosine is even. Okay, if this was a sine, it would be odd, and we could still use that. So the cosine being even means the following. It means that the cosine of a negative theta is exactly the same as the cosine of theta. So this negative, I can just make it disappear. I can just graph this one, and that will exactly match that one. That negative I don't need, so I can actually just write this. And that will be easier to make a table with. So um, let's see, what do we have? We then have a shift, or I have a phase shift, but a shift of pi over 2 to the right, and for this one the period will be 2 pi divided by 2, which is pi, and on this one actually I'm going to make the whole table, so it'll be pi over 4. So we're going to count by pi over 4. So what would that look like? So your first x is your pi over 2 to the right. Okay, so I'm showing you now basically what you can do if you don't want to solve that inequality. So pi over 2. Then you need to add pi over 4. So pi over 2 is 2 pi over 4, right? So pi over 2 plus pi over 4 is 3 pi over 4. Plus pi over 4 is 4 pi over 4, which is just pi. And then it's 5 pi over 4. 
and then the last one should be 6 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 2. And then we can check with the period to see if it works. So if the period is pi, and you start at 1 pi over 2, you should end up at 3 pi over 2. So that part will be, that's exactly what we want. Okay. And then the cosine, and you can write whatever you want here. You can use this argument, that one, or the original one. Actually, I'm going to use the original one. So the cosine of a negative 2x plus pi, okay, at this point should be 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and 1. That's the regular cosine pattern. And then your final is the amplitude change. And so this table ends up looking like this. And then you graph that. Um, I would probably extend this to the to the y-axis here, pi over 2. So when you count by pi over 4s, so we'll set up the x-axis here. And you can finish the whole thing if you want. So we're going to start at pi over 2, right? But you're counting by pi over 4s. So that's 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4. So this is where I would start my table. So actually, I'm going to extend it twice. You know what? I'll just do the whole thing. So 1, 2, 3, 4 equals steps. So it's pi over 2, 3 over 4. 4, there's pi, 5 over 4, and then 3 pi over 2. Uh, this one started at 2. So it starts at 2, 0, negative 2, back to 0, back to 2, and then one step here, I should have a dot at zero. One more step here, I should have a dot over here. So this particular function actually looks like this. And that would be the whole picture for that. All right, that's really it. Thank you.